Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chloe. I'm an art historian and museum professional who's been working in the field for about five years now and I specialize in Egyptian art and architecture and art education, museum education. And I often work with a lot of young students or new people to the field who ask for advice on museum careers. And I was very lucky enough to go to UCLA, work at the Hammer Museum, work at institutions like at the Getty Museum where I had career development courses where I could learn about some of the ins and outs. And so I'm very excited to announce that I'm launching an intro to museum careers series. Now this is meant to be quite a basic introduction to the types of museums, types of departments, types of roles. And the reason I'm going to start off quite simplistic is because oftentimes I have people approaching me saying that they are interested in museums of all types and not sure really where they're interested in going, what skills are able to transfer from say a natural history museum to a history museum to an art museum. Some roles do have applicable skills that are easier to jump between some, say curatorial departments are harder to do that. So the point of the series being a very simple step-by-step -step introduction to what a museum is, what are the different types of museums, what's the difference between a museum and a gallery, and an introduction to basic roles. Now, of course, we can get into very much nitty gritty. This is meant to be kind of a broad overview of the field at this moment. So I hope you will join me today. I will be introducing you to the types of museums that exist. So what is a museum? When you take a museum studies course, this is something that really goes off. It can be something that includes archives, that a, has a mission of caring for objects, educating the public, holds all different types of collections. It can be a children's museum, an interactive space. There's the term museum is very broad and trying to figure out exactly what one is, is sometimes not as easy to articulate as others because there can be things that overlap like libraries, botanical gardens, historic houses, etc. that overlay with each other. And I'm going to kind of discuss them somewhat interchangeably and use examples to discuss what I mean. So I get lots of questions about people wanting to work in museums, but would be, they say they'd be happy in various ones, but based off of their field or background, they may be a good fit for a specific role that you may not realize exists at a do another museum or doesn't exist at some types of museum. Each type of museum comes with its own specific types of traits to keep in mind and also requires its own set of research and also will impact the type of education level needed, competitiveness, benefits, job security, etc. when entering into the field. So these are all things to keep in mind. So size is important because this not only discusses how many people work at this museum, but it really dictates the kind of role and responsibilities you have. So for example, at a smaller museum where you may have five employees, one person may be doing the role of five people that you would have at a larger museum. And on a larger museum to mega museum like the British Museum, the Met, where you have so many employees, you tend to have a lot more specialized roles and specialized set of knowledge. Um, and you're typically more siloed from other departments. Whereas in smaller museums where you're only five to 10 staff members, you're all interacting with each other, picking up the pieces all over the place. So that's important to know. So next is funding. Um, now, right now we're talking about museums versus galleries. Typically, 
your museums are non-profits, but that's not always the case. This is where things get tricky. Um, but you typically have federal, so you can think about the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. All those museums are run by the government. Then you can have state, county, or city-owned museums. Think of maybe a local historic house or historic association that runs a small museum, something like that. Then you have private museums, and then nonprofit really falls into any of those. Then private can be either nonprofit or for profit, depending on who is the backer. Um, usually, that's a wealthy individual with a substantial trust, typically. Then you also have university owned museums and these are typically whether it's a public university or private university these museums are funded by the powers that be that fund the university so why does funding matter because it can seem quite in the weeds well it's important because the funding of a museum really impacts its mission so for example if you are a county funded museum in a specific part of the country let's say it's more rural you will have to use a specific type of language and your programming will be targeted to a specific type of audience now this isn't either good or bad it's just something to keep in mind that depending on your interests as an employee this will impact where you want to go if your, um, let's say your background is in something like community engagement and this museum has really limited um, community engagement with say K through 12 and it's really geared towards maybe senior citizens, that may not be the best place for you. Neither a good thing nor a bad thing, but those types of things do impact it. Or another example, if your museum is funded by university and it's more research-based than um, public-facing, um, if their goal is to serve university students and have it be a place where it's funded by the university, meant to be a research institution, rather than being an education place for say K through 12 or something like that, there may be fewer roles for educators. So these are all things that really play into job availability, what, where you may align interest-wise, etc. Okay, so let's talk types of museums. I'm gonna be more general as all of these can be divided further, like how a science museum could be further specialized as an air and space museum or natural history museum. So for each one of these, you can keep getting more specific collections, but I'm going to be a little bit broad. So we have science museums, we have history museums, and these can be specified into very specific things. You can have something like state history, time period, specific events. You can have something like a memorial, like the Holocaust museums around the world. They are more they're a mix of museums and memorial for a specific time and event. The 9-11 Museum in New York is an instance of this. Then you have natural history museums, children's museums, where those are way more based on interactive activities. Then you have historic houses and gardens. So sometimes botanical gardens can be lumped into the museum world depending on where it is located. Then you have art museums. Now this is my specialty and this is where things get a little um, complicated. So you can have a single collection that was a collection owned by a particular collector. So for example, the Broad Museum in Los Angeles was founded by Eli Broad and that was all of the art that he personally collected and then left a trust for, for them to continue to collect. The Getty Museum is like this as well. And usually when you have an individual that founded the collection, the collection is really based off of their taste. So this can be whatever 
the taste of the time was, whatever the hot um, selling artists were of the time, really dictates uh, what is in that collection. Another example is you can have things like time period based museums. So for example, you can have a contemporary art museum or MoMA, which is modern art starting from, you know, early 20th century going up all the way to contemporary art. And then you can have specializations like the Museum of Latin American Art, Museum of African American Art, many different museums that are focused on, you know, specific types of geographic areas or time frames. Again, it really depends on how the museum is funded and who the collector was and how that museum obtained its collection. And again, this is something I can talk about in another video, but collecting practices and how museums come to be also dictates occasionally the types of roles you have at those museums. So for example, at the Hammer Museum, the Hammer was founded by Armand Hammer, who was a collector of 19th, 20th century French artists, mainly and old masters like Rembrandt and Titian. Then he passed away and the museum was then acquired by UCLA. And then their collecting practices changed to contemporary art. Now, because of its collecting practices, there is a role for somebody who is an art historian of that more historic art. But the bulk of their collecting practices and exhibitions are contemporary. So if you're an impressionist art historian wanting to be a curator, you know, it dictates what museums you will look at. So then you have things like the Huntington Library and Gardens, where it is one rich person's historic house that also contains their art collection and rare book collection. And it's also on the landscape where they lived, where it's also a garden. So places like the Huntington kind of meld all the different types of museums together. And it's actually not uncommon to find things like this, where you have a wealthy individual, it's this historic house and their collection, but also has maybe a contemporary collecting practice or a space to exhibit contemporary art as well. So next thing that we need to discuss is the difference between galleries and museums. So typically museums are nonprofits and you do not buy the art off the walls of a museum. Though fun story, when I worked at the Hammer Museum, there was a story that went, Beyonce was at the museum with a guide and asked them how much something on the wall was because she wanted to purchase it. But on the reverse side, galleries typically are galleries that represent artists who are actively selling their works. And so it is a promotion based industry for lack of a better term. And so those are just basic ways that you can understand the difference between the two. For example, when you go into a um, small museum, you're typically not going to look at something and say, oh, what is the price of this? Whereas you can go to galleries and see an idea of the artist and understand what, what kind of the market is and get a better idea of their work. That is a whole other conversation that you can get into nitty nitty gritty, but again, I want to keep this at the basics. So again, this was meant to be just a slight introduction. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave a comment, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'm really excited to create this resource for those who are interested in learning about museums and the field. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.